Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be talking about digital to analog crosstalk in mixed signal PCBs. Now, if you've ever read any design guidelines on mixed signal PCBs, one thing you'll see over and over again is everybody talking about crosstalk from the digital section into the analog section, but it seems that no one understands why that's actually important. We're gonna look at some strategies for how to deal with it, as well as some things you might not want to do in your mixed signal PCB. Let's get started. So I've done many videos in the past about mixed signal PCB designs. Mixed signal PCBs are one of my favorite types of things to design because they have a lot of digital interfaces that you have to very carefully mix with an analog interface. Now, whenever you read design guidelines about mixed signal PCBs, you're always gonna hear somebody bring up digital to analog crosstalk, but it seems that everybody ignores analog to digital crosstalk. Well, why is that? Well, let's take a look at the characteristics of these types of signals, and if we look at their different characteristics and then what the analog side is connected to, we can start to understand a bit more why this is so important. So if we have a trace carrying, for example, a digital signal, and my digital signal is running alongside another trace that has an analog signal, just drawn here as a sine wave, whenever this digital signal switches, it can then induce crosstalk into this analog signal, which will then typically appear something like this, something like a small oscillation that appears superimposed on this analog signal. So because we have this happen between our digital and our analog interface, we generally always say that it's a good idea to separate your digital stuff and your analog stuff into different regions of the board. So for example, if I just draw out a PCB kind of like this, we would wanna have all of our digital stuff over here. We might have our MCU with an ADC interface. Maybe we have an actual ADC chip right here. And then we try and have all of our analog stuff being routed over on this side of the board. So this is a pretty crude drawing, but it really at a high conceptual level illustrates a good way to segment stuff in your mixed signal PCB. So that way you don't have the digital stuff creating crosstalk into the analog stuff. Now, the question you have to ask here is, why is this crosstalk so important? And if we compare this level of crosstalk to this analog signal, is it really going to create errors in an analog circuit? Furthermore, you can actually have analog crosstalk into a digital section. So just like we have this signal being superimposed on this analog signal, if we then look at the crosstalk from the analog signal into the digital section, it would actually appear as a small out of phase sine wave superimposed on our digital signal. So the two really can coexist. So now you have to ask, why is this so important, but this is not so important? First, let's look at the digital case and then we can decide whether or not this is so important for our digital signals. So if we look at a graph of the voltage in our digital signal over time, of course it looks something like this. And then of course we have our low threshold and then we have our high threshold that define our two logic states. This is just the basics of binary signaling. If we have a little bit of analog crosstalk on this digital signal, how big does this need to be in order to create a problem on a digital interface? Well, it really depends on the noise margin that's available here on this high and low state. And that noise margin could be a pretty significant fraction of whatever this core voltage level is for this logic signal. So it could be on the order of, let's say, hundreds of millivolts. What's the value of this crosstalk that you're gonna typically see? Well, the amplitude or the peak-to-peak -peak voltage for this crosstalk signal is gonna depend on the rate of change in the current and the voltage on the aggressor line. So however fast this is oscillating which basically means that this is proportional to the angular frequency of this signal. It's also proportional to the peak voltage, so how big is this signal or the amplitude of this signal. And these two factors are going to determine whether or not you get an appreciable crosstalk here on this digital signal. Now, as it turns out, in a lot of bandwidths, for most cases, and in a lot of PCBs, this is really only gonna be about, let's say, 50 millivolts. 
okay? So it's a pretty small value until you start getting up to really high frequencies. So as we scale up to higher frequencies, this is gonna increase. And if we then also scale this logic level down to lower voltages, eventually you could get to a situation where this becomes appreciable and maybe creates errors in your digital signal. But in most cases, this is gonna be pretty small and it's gonna be much smaller than the noise margin that you have available on your digital signal. So that's why we generally don't worry about analog into digital crosstalk. Now, what about the other direction where we have digital going into analog crosstalk? So let's do that comparison next. So when we look at the crosstalk from the digital signal into the analog channel, we then need to ask how big is this crosstalk signal? And then if we compare that to the amplitude of our analog signal, we then have to ask, does that noise actually matter? So you can see here on screen that the crosstalk signal could be 25 millivolts or 50 millivolts, depending on the stack up and depending on whether we're looking at far end or near end crosstalk. You'll notice in that simulation result that the digital signal had a rise time of around one or two nanoseconds. So this gives us a useful reference that we can use to estimate whether or not this is gonna be a problem in our analog channel. So now that we have a number for our crosstalk signal or our peak amplitude of our crosstalk, let's take a look at what would happen if we were to say, take this signal with its noise and put it into an ADC and try and take a measurement. So that's a pretty typical application that you would have to do in this type of situation where you have an analog signal coming in and then you have some noise on top of it. So let's just suppose for a moment that we're trying to measure in a zero to five volt range with an eight bit ADC. And we have this, uh, let's say 50 millivolt peak crosstalk signal superimposed on our analog signal. So if we're operating with a zero to five volt range with an eight bit ADC, then the quantization level delta V is gonna be 19 millivolts. So it's 19 and change, but basically 19 millivolts. So remember this quantization level defines logic states that are being measured or being used to quantify this analog signal. So this just amounts to about two or just over two states worth of information when we compare this 50 millivolt peak crosstalk to this 19 millivolt quantization. Now let's suppose we had a higher resolution ADC zero to five volts, and we had 12 bits. What would the quantization be in that case? Well, now the quantization is down to delta V equals about 1.22 millivolts. Now, if we're trying to get a precision measurement of this background sine wave in the presence of this noise, we can pretty clearly see that if we go up to a higher resolution to try and get a much more precise measurement of this signal, we start to get more and more error for a given level of crosstalk that's present on this analog line. Now let's suppose instead of trying to measure a zero to five volt signal, we were measuring, let's say, a zero to one volt signal. Well now in this case, if we have a zero to one volt signal with an eight bit ADC, instead of having 19 millivolts per state, we have four millivolts per state. This 50 millivolts peak crosstalk creates much more error. And instead of being two states worth of error, it's actually 10 states worth of error. So now in the case of the 12 bit ADC with a zero to one volt signal, now this goes down by a factor five to 0 0.244 millivolts. So you can see now that our error gets even larger in this case when we need to measure even smaller signals. In some cases, the signal that you're trying to measure, or at least the variation that you're trying to measure is not on the scale of full volts. Maybe it's zero to 100 millivolts. Well, now this peak crosstalk is basically half of your full strength signal level that you're trying to measure. So just by comparing this noise level to these values that we might be trying to measure at an analog interface, you can see that the signal to noise ratio can go down pretty quickly when we're trying to measure these very low level signals. That's the main reason that we care so much about digital into analog crosstalk. It's, and especially for these precision measurement applications where we can get multiple measurement states worth of error, even with a low level of crosstalk. So the simplest way to solve this problem with crosstalk going into our analog line is of course to segment out portions of the layout and to just basically space out your analog and digital lines as I discussed at the beginning of the video. However, someone might want to try some other method such as, for example, filtering. 
So can you apply filtering here to try and reduce the effect of this noise signal on this analog signal in order to recover an accurate measurement from this analog channel? So if we were going to apply filtering to an analog signal with some noise, what we might do is then feed that into a resistor and a capacitor to apply charge compensation. And then this is connected to the input of our ADC. Now you can do this as a basic type of filter, but you have to remember that this adds to the sampling capacitance that's already built into the interface of the ADC. So this C right here is going to add to this sampling capacitance and it's going to affect the settling time of the ADC as it switches between logic states that it uses to encode this analog signal. In addition to changing the settling time or increasing the settling time, what it's going to do is limit the channel bandwidth. So what that means is that you may be able to cut out some of this noise on top of the analog signal, but eventually the bandwidth gets so low that you're not even able to measure this sine wave that you're trying to measure as you continue to increase the capacitance. Depending on the strength of the crosstalk, a better strategy would actually be to use a lower resolution ADC and maybe you can sacrifice some of the precision that you need in measuring this sine wave in order to reduce the effect of this noise on this analog line. So this is a good tip in general for dealing with noisy analog lines that are being fed into an ADC. However, if you're just trying to measure a DC signal instead of an AC signal, you want to filter out as much of that AC signal that's being overlaid as you possibly can. So you can generally opt for a slightly larger capacitor depending on how often you need to sample that DC signal. After successive measurements of that DC signal, you can also use averaging. Using averaging will then further reduce the noise by a factor square root of n, where n is the number of measurements that you use in your average. So we discussed just one typical application involving crosstalk interfering with an analog measurement, but the same principle applies to many other analog circuits that you might need to work with in your PCB. So once again, make sure to follow the guideline that I said at the beginning, figure out how to properly segment and route your analog and digital circuits so that you don't receive that digital crosstalk into that analog line. Thanks for watching everybody. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, keep leaving those comments and questions in the comment section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator folks.